In January 2011, Target announced that it was foraying into Canada by acquiring a portion of Zellers Incorporation, a subsidiary of the Hudson's Bay Company. Target had agreed to pay Zellers 1.825 billion Canadian dollars to acquire the leasehold interests in up to 220 sites operated by Zellers in Canada. Greg Steinhoffel, former chairman, president and CEO of Target Corporation, said, this transaction provides an outstanding opportunity for them to extend their Target brand, Target stores and superior shopping experience, beyond the United States for the first time in their company's history. They believe their investment in these leases will strengthen the surrounding communities, as well as create strategic and financial value for Target stakeholders. But, less than two years after entering Canada, Target shocked the retail world by pulling out. After accumulating $2.5 billion in losses, Target shut down all of its 133 Canadian locations and laid off 17,600 employees. Target was an analytical and efficient organization with a highly admired corporate culture. The corporation's entry into Canada was uncharacteristically bold, not just for Target, but for any retailer. Not only that, but the chain expected to be profitable within its first year of operations. After all, Americans and Canadians speak the same language. That should have been easy, right? But it's not that simple. So, let's see in the upcoming videos what went wrong in the Target Canada. It didn't take long for Target to figure out the underlying cause of the supply chain breakdown in 2012. The data contained within the company's supply chain software, which governs the movement of inventory, was riddled with flaws. At the very start, an untold number of mistakes were made, and the company spent months trying to recover from them. For instance, in order to stock products, the company had to enter information about each item into SAP. There could be dozens of fields for a single product. Typically, this information is retrieved from vendors before target employees put it into SAP. The system requires correct data to function properly and ensure products move as anticipated. A team assigned to investigate the problem discovered an astounding number of errors in SAP. The result impacted every other downstream business process, from placing purchase orders with suppliers to having accurate inventory visibility from sending fulfillment signals to their distribution center to forecasting and replenishing store inventory levels. As a result, their distribution centers became completely bottlenecked. With all of the data integrity issues, there was no way for the distribution centers to be able to quickly and efficiently receive goods, store them, and subsequently fulfill and replenish orders to the stores. On top of this, inaccuracies in the scheduling and ordering process caused shipping dates from suppliers to be inaccurate and misaligned with the company merchandising calendar. As a result, the distribution centers were forced to add off-site storage. This alone would have created a loss of control and visibility that would have been almost impossible to manage. Perhaps the biggest reason why Target failed can be attributed to its empty shelves. The foot traffic in the early days was higher than expected, which was encouraging, but it didn't take long for consumers to start complaining on social media about empty shelves. Since the beginning, Target had problems with its supply chain and consistently failed to gauge demand for its products. After a long period of no improvements, Canadians simply switch from shopping at Target, to shopping at places such as Walmart and Sears, where the shelves are stacked. Slow foot traffic and lower sales eventually became the standard at Target. Ironically, even as consumers encountered barely stocked stores, Target's distribution centers were bursting with products. Target Canada had ordered way more stock than it could actually sell. The company had purchased a sophisticated forecasting and replenishment system made by a firm called JDA Software, but it wasn't particularly useful at the outset, 
requiring years of historical data to actually provide meaningful sales forecasts. When the buying team was preparing for store openings, it instead relied on wildly optimistic projections developed at U.S. headquarters. The company treated Canadian locations the same way they did operational stores in the U.S., and not as newcomers that would have to draw consumers away from rival retailers. To add even more headaches, the point-of-sale system was malfunctioning. The self-checkouts gave incorrect change. The cash terminals took unusually long to boot up and sometimes froze. Items wouldn't scan, or the POS returned the incorrect price. Sometimes a transaction would appear to complete, and the customer would leave the store, but the payment never actually went through. Zeller's stores that Target acquired were not in ideal locations, as many were in rundown shopping centers and not easily accessible. As a result, Target had to spend a lot of money reviving the stores. This was a major oversight, as Target should have leased the stores that required little capital outlay and have foreseeable potential in the first place. When Target opened in Canada, Canadians were excited by the prospect of having another discount retailer where they could go and save money. The expectation of lower prices was not only boosted by Target's brand image but also by the fact that Canadians have shopped at Target in the U.S. and expect the same or at least similar price points. However, it turns out that goods in the U.S. stores are roughly 20% cheaper than those in Canada. With that being said, Target had to cut its margins which further affected its profitability. Now let's see how Target could have done things differently. The obvious recurring theme for all these problems and wrong decisions with Target's entry into Canada, is the immense time pressure. From the very beginning, a clock was ticking, and that clock was absurd. The company did everything it could, to remove barriers that might slow the progress, and to ensure decisions could be made quickly. Timelines were highly compressed. For example, building a new distribution center from scratch, might take a few years. And, Target was going to do it in less than two years, moreover, it also planned to construct three of them. Similarly, introducing a new SAP system within two years? Hiring and training 15,000 employees? They never had a chance. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I hope this video might be informative for you. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.